Hey, how's it going everybody? We're gonna look at a couple of things that I got off the curb. So I have this cobalt electric mower that I got off the curb. No battery. This thing takes a 40 watt max battery and the batteries are probably more than half of just getting an entirely new motor on these. That is the prohibitive thing about going electric. I can't stress this enough until the economics makes sense on an electric mower you're going to be buying one of these things every two three four years and then then trashing it if you want to save the planet there are better ways to do it than trashing a mower every three or four years so i'm going to get off my high horse on that one for a minute and, and tell you that what we're about to do today is actually going to be uh, the best thing for Mother Earth that we possibly could do, which is try to salvage this from the landfill, which is what I've already done by grabbing it off the curb, for one thing. And secondly, we're going to replace the motor on this, the electric motor, with the gas motor that we see here, which was also a curb pick. I got this off the curb, I don't know, a week or so back, maybe a couple weeks back, and uh, the pump had a a crack in it the previous owner of this had obviously known about the crack and they tried to uh, silicone it which you can't silicone a pressure pump uh, crack it just doesn't work like that yeah, you can see the leak see the leak right there water pouring out of uh, right where the previous owner had placed some uh, some caulk or something some silicone and some tape thinking they were going to stop the pressure washer leak with tape may have, may have worked for a minute but obviously did not work long term but that thing is just leaking like a sieve right there you can buy those pumps i think they're around i think the cheapest one i found was around 70 bucks something like that for just the pump so yeah I, you know not very cost effective really to replace the pump i'll be honest but you can kind of see how these are put together. So this part right here goes on the shaft up underneath like this and mounts to the bottom. And the mounting holes here also are what mounts the engine and everything together all in one swoop. And then on the bottom side, this is the bottom, there is a bearing that is, uh, that is eccentric and it's cammed. So it, as it, as it spins, um, the high side moves around and what it does is it contacts each one of these in succession which presses it down and and pumps so you get pump 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 pump, 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 pump like that uh, but unfortunately like I said cracked right here and these pumps uh, if you go to buy a pump uh, are also pretty prohibitively expensive if I were to find a used pump or something like that fine but usually the pumps are what go out on these not the engine so you don't find a lot of people who are scrapping one of these where the pump is good still you know where you find one on eBay or something that just doesn't happen usually so not economical to fix not economical to fix but it might be worthwhile to put this engine on this deck and have a complete running mower so we're gonna see what it takes to do that and see if it's even feasible and uh, We'll just, yeah, we'll test it out together. All right, so first things first, we're gonna remove the motor from this machine. Uh, this motor is actually already loose. It's just sitting on that deck right now, so that part's already been done. So let's go ahead and loosen this motor and get it off of there. That's already loose. Now somebody also online did a, did a video, I think uh, Chicanic, her, um, she has a YouTube channel as well. She did a video about these, where these pieces right here, this little fan, which uh, cools the motor. It cools the motor in addition to mounting the blade. Look at this. This piece of crap is plastic, okay? And it's the blade is held on there by these little um, these little indentations here, these little protrusions, rather, excuse me. Um, 
they're what hold the blade on and keep it from just free spinning. When these break, you can't get this part. This part, they don't sell it. So by not selling that part, you have to scrap the whole motor because of that. I mean, isn't that stupid? You, you buy this crap thinking that, oh, I'm being ecological, but you're not. You're being stupid because you can't get that part. You have to scrap that entire thing. And, you know, not to mention the fact that the batteries, they only last for two or three years anyway, four if you're lucky. And all the lithium, the cobalt, the nickel uh, that's in those batteries, somebody has to go mine it and find a source for it. And usually that's in places like the Congo, you know, in Africa, places that are territories where we're, uh, you know, in political strife and all this stuff. And it's just like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? As, as a society, it makes no sense. So four bolts mounting this. So we're going to have to re drill to mount it. That's okay. Kind of figured that. And these are held on with torques. I'm gonna try a T25 on it. It fits, but I don't know if it's gonna, it probably would take a 27 or 30. But. Okay. Now yeah, that'll do it. 25 will do it. It's lightweight, I will say that for it. The wiring harness is going into the plastic here. I'm not sure how that probably pops off. Let me see if I can pop that off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do have some little Molex connectors here. Should just should just pop right off. With any luck. Number one, this one's a bit short, which is a shame. Goodness. Oh, come on. Why would they make it so short? I mean, give me a little extra length so I can bring it out, you know, and, to, and unplug it. What's the use of having a mold? Look. What's the use of having a Molex connector on something if you can't reach it? Look. God. I swear, man, sometimes... Some of the engineering decisions that are made, you know they're doing it so that you can't fix things. So, I'm cutting it. It's not like it really matters. I probably will not be reusing this. The, the motor, though, um, is likely a good motor. I don't know if my power supply goes up to 40 volts or not, but it might go to a voltage high enough where we could actually test this and just see that it spins, which we might do. What is this? Is this some kind of safety switch? What is this? There's a switch here on this that's connected to those wires that I just took off of there. So I don't I wonder what that is. What would hit that? I don't know. A bagger maybe but how would that change anything I don't know hmm. uh, and again so they they put this through before they attach the Molex connector, so we have to clip that off. Because I'm not going to be using any of this wiring. These appear to take a T20. So there's this one side of that. And here's our switch. That's a big old lever switch. Yes. Okay. So when you pull that, you pull this, and then it hold, holds this in place. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But we don't need it.
we won't need this bar either but I'll keep it because it may be useful on something else. You never know when you need one of those. Because that's the thing about this one, it uh, the kill switch is actually on the unit. Where are my cutters I just had? I mean, you turn around for two seconds and you lose something. Okay. Okay, so there is a nice, uh, well, I say clean, but we need to go ahead and spray. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and wash this off. Okay, now that that's clean, let's see if we can get the engine attached now. All right. Okay, the problem we're gonna have, obviously it wasn't built for this engine. You know, it was built for, for a smaller diameter. This is smaller than the, uh, the bottom of the sump on this, so. And this might not be feasible after all, I just don't know. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, none of these bolt holes are lining up. Yeah, <laughs> I won't even be able to use one of them. Let me think about this. Okay, so the brainstorm that I have here, we're going to cut that base off of that and use that as a template um, to try to draw where we need on that one. So, I don't know. It's just a rough idea at this point. <laughs> we'll see if it actually works, but we'll cut it. Wish I had a cutting torch. It'd be easier than this. Okay, so there's that part off, but I'm going to have to also uh, get this front lip off, so i got to cut across here too. Okay, yeah, see the difference in size on that? That's pretty different. Uh, starting to believe this might have been a bad idea. <laughs> Am I deterred? I'm thinking about being deterred. I'm thinking about it. I'm possibly deterred. But, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. really I just need enough of this cut away that it, uh, you know, it gives me some room. So I'm thinking, thinking what I might do in this instance, I'm going to use this as my mounting plate template for the holes. Uh, which side was the front? Where's my, there, let's see, which side was the front? Nope, that side was the front. So these are where my holes will have to go. Well, one there, which is not a concern. 
shouldn't be an issue. Um, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to trim off these corners too. Let me go ahead and do that and trim those corners. Well, there went my wheel. Hopefully it just broke off in one little piece and is around here somewhere, but I don't see it. I don't see it. As long as it's not somewhere starting a fire, I'm good. But usually, and this is the way it goes, you get right up almost to the end. Look, I mean, I had that much more to go and I was done with this thing. <laughs> Luckily, I've got another one. I don't have to run to the store. unplug before you change these. My problem was I cut with it for too long without letting it cool off. That was the problem. Should have given it some more time. I want to mark my holes and then that's going to allow me to cut this where it needs to be cut without messing up uh, messing up my mounting holes. Okay, that ought to do it. Only thing that gives me pause is uh, this little area right here was is a little bit shallow, but I think that's gonna get it. Let's, let's, let's check it. Uh, you know what? I should probably drill the holes first and then we'll check it. Let's drill the mounting holes. All right, so there's my modified deck. Let's let's see if we're even anywhere in the neighborhood. Of where we need to be. Well, tell you what, this little muffler cage is gonna have to either come off or be bent. Now then, that's better. All right. Well, man, it sure looks like it might work. Am I crazy? Am I crazy or is that gonna work? I'll tell you what, I like the combination of the black and blue. It looks pretty badass. With the blacked out wheels, <laughs> it looks like a low rider of some sort. 
like a villain's mower. <laughs> it's like Lex Luthor's mower. Mm, does this one even line up? It doesn't. Why doesn't that one line up? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna drop those bolts in one at a time on these holes that I made just to see if they're all three lining up. They need to all line up, obviously. Eh, no, <laughs> that ain't gonna work, I'm pretty sure. Looks like they all three have different lengths of thread, possibly, so I don't know. It's, well, it's cockeyed. That's great. That's good. It's not really gonna look its best if it's cockeyed, is it? All right, uh, well, we are hitting. We're hitting. I got a little bit more trimming to do, apparently. Okay, a trip to the hardware store later and the engine's mounted. Now we've got to put this adapter on the shaft so that we can attach a blade. I don't know what blade we're going to put on it, whether we're going to put the old one or not. Uh, we'll have to see. I've got several blades. Thanks to a recent, recent auction win. But we still got the key on there. But it doesn't need, this doesn't need it. I don't, this might not be the right thing. So this has a built-in key, which um, really isn't ideal, but that's what that's what we have here. So apparently it's an official style of part, but uh, I don't know how much I trust it. I definitely trust it more than uh, more than the thing that was on here before. That that fan thing with the plastic. That that thing was a piece of junk. Okay, here's the original blade, and this is a pretty small blade. We'll attach this for now. Um, actually, no, we can't, because this has a very specially shaped uh, little divot right there, which is not going to work. So let me see what else I've got. Well, wouldn't you know it, every other thing that I have is too large. So I'm going to have to... Um, you know, I hate to do it, but I'm gonna have to modify this blade or just buy another different, you know, a different blade. Those are my options. I think I'm gonna modify this blade. Yeah, this is, there's just not enough uh, there's not enough bite to really do what I want to with this. It's th this too thick. So lesson learned on that. That that steel is just too thick to do it with uh, to drill it like that. Um, it's gonna ruin my bits. So we'll have to order a blade. No big deal. But 
got the blade in for this and we're gonna put it on. First, let's open up the package, see what we get with it. So this is a max power uh, 20 inch universal blade with a one inch center hole and it's got reducing washers. So, uh, you know, it makes it universal. You can use it on various models. And the reason for going with this is because it was, it was the absolute cheapest replacement blade that I could find that, uh, that, that would fit. Here's the blade. Here's the model and all of that. If you want to look up one for yourself, like I said, it's uh, it's got a one inch center hole, so it will accommodate a large range of things, and then it's got some reducing washers, uh, you know, to get it as to get it as close as possible to what you need, you know. So if you, in other words, if you have a a center spindle that's that size, you use that washer and so forth. I don't think we're going to need one of the washers though. So here is our adapter. We're going to put the adapter on. Okay, so that I think is going to work without any kind of adapter at all because it's uh, almost exactly the size that we need on that outside. So. That is the wrong way around. It's rubbing on the deck on one side. Why is that? It's rubbing on the deck. Maybe it's just because it's tilted up. I'm gonna put it on and we'll see if uh, that changes things. I may have to uh, reduce the, the, the overall size of the thing. rubbing. It's rubbing right right in here. Uh, there's a groove on this down here. You can see where the blade is coming to. And you see where the blade groove is, I guess, supposed to be. And it's kind of hitting up here on this part. You can see over here on this plastic also, it's scraping all along in here. So, uh, it's definitely hitting. You don't want the blade to hit. Okay, so what I've decided to do is take a little bit off of the uh, each end of this blade. Almost there. Okay, now it has clearance and the balance still seems good. So uh, you can see, you know, I didn't even take much off of the end of it. I just kind of uh, angled this sharp tip a little bit. So overall, it probably took maybe a little over an eighth inch or something like that off. Okay. Alright, so that's spinning freely. Uh, the blade's balanced. Um, I think we're ready to try to fire this up for the first time.
does have a little bit of rubbing still on the blade. Um, I'm gonna mow a little bit over here. Uh, it doesn't actually rub normally when sitting still, but as you use the, as you push it around, it kind of twists the chassis slightly. So it does have a slight bit of rub. Um, it's not hitting metal on metal, but it it is, uh, I can hear it kind of scraping the plastic parts. If you listen close enough, you can hear it too. Definitely uh, want to grind that blade down a little bit more. Here's the blade back off and you can see just what basically one pass on the lawn uh, does to the blade. I've already got, this is discolored and partially coming off already. And then I've also got uh, the paint. You can see how far down it's worn. So this is predominantly where it's cutting the grass is right in here. But look at that already. I mean, you expect that with a blade. That happens really fast. Not bad. Right. We appear to have clearance. Clearance.
Okay, so that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, that was pretty interesting and formative experience. I still have a little bit more to take off that blade. It still is uh, kind of scraping at various points, but it's not too bad. It's only when you really twist and, and tug at the, uh, at the handlebar that it kind of twists the chassis enough to, to scrape just a little bit, but it's not bad. You may have actually heard it a couple times, but uh, yeah, so a little bit more grinding on the blade, and then I'm gonna call this one done. So if you found this interesting, uh, hit subscribe, and for now, we'll see y'all later.